The small group of twenty turned their chairs as the young woman stepped next to the television screen. Normally they talked in a circle like any group, but today she wanted to show them a video. She was like any in the group though the girls envied her perfect skin and her tightly smooth groin. She was five foot two petite and shapely another point to envy. She wore very little makeup and a few wanted to ask her how she did it or where she had surgery. Her brown hair traveled down to her knees and half of them wondered if it was fake or that she was wearing some type of fall. Others searched for any sign that she wasn't as feminine as she presented. You see this was a transgendered group. Fifteen males trying to be girls, three female trying to be boys, and two that just didn't really fit as they were happy being shemales. Thought each were brought here by their feelings and the need to be around their kind like all social animals. They were looking for support, advice, and a place they could relax and be themselves without being judged, yet here they were judging the small girl who to them looked perfect. She saw this on their faces and their body language. They knew she didn't belong. However she did belong, but how would shock them all? Hello, I am Marion Tracy Farr. I think a few of you instantly figured out that my initials are MTF. A few of them chuckled, but the rest refrained from how serious she looked. That is just the beginning of the oddities that comprise my life. My mother picked my names and they are used both by men and women fairly unisex. When I was born the doctors label me as a boy. Genetic testing revealed the same thing, XY, boy. However my mother had a different plan for me. My father didn't know I was a boy. A few gasped though most didn't believe her claim of being a male. My mother from day one dressed me as a girl. Everything I wore was pink or purple. As I grew up my toys were feminine in all forms. My mother shouldn't have been this way. She had a boy and a girl before. My brother and sister were the perfect stereotypical children. My brother was a football star and my sister a cheerleader. I was born five years after my sister. From early on I was shy, and as I grew up this shyness pushed me into books and other activities that I could do myself. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what. I always wore skirts and dresses. You may not believe it, but this is the first pair of jeans I have ever owned. Today is the first day I have worn them in public. The group murmured with each other wondering where she was going with all this. She turned on the TV and worked with her laptop. These are pictures of my life. My mother took pictures all the time of me all throughout my life. I can say that I have had a happy life. That I wanted for nothing. Though these pictures only tell part of the story. I was homeschooled unlike my siblings who went to public and private schools. They had friends and activities away from mother and father. I yearned to go to school. I yearned to have friends and go to sleepovers and birthday parties, but again I couldn't because my mother had something to fear. It would only take an accident and I would have been found out. That I wasn't a girl even with the long hair and soft features, or the breasts that developed like any girl. Down here I was different. When I was eight my mother made me take pills. At first they were vitamins and later they were pills to prevent me from getting sick. Any excuse to get me to continue to take them. My mother was a doctor, so it was easy for her to get the drugs she wanted me to take. My development was now locked into being a female. As the next set of pictures will show you the darker side. From an early age each day I had to stand in front of this board and get my picture taken, with and with clothing. They all were transfixed as the pictures of her slowly grew up. It was something that very few ever witnessed. The poses were all the same, and the girl at the podium stood nearly the same way as the slideshow progressed and then stopped at about the age of twelve. That is the first part of my life. One that I wish never happened, but the next part will shock you or make you wish this had been you. My mother had gained enough influence or favors I am not really sure. 
I went through surgery to make me into the girl you see now. From this last picture you can see my penis is still about the same size as it was when I was 8, but the hormones I took every day made it smaller. I went into surgery like this and came out like this. This is a picture of me a month after the surgery. I was physically a girl now. A few months later I had another surgery that corrected a few mistakes. As the slideshow continues I see your questions are rising, but I am long from done. I still continued to take my pills now I still didn't know what they were, but I took them by myself with no urging from my mother. After the surgery I was finally able to go to school. It was a small private school that you would send your children to make them perfect princesses. Model girls ready to be the perfect wives of rich men. Still I was very shy and it took a long time for me to be assertive enough to even talk to another of the girls. You see I was attracted to them and I didn't understand why. I hadn't had the contact with girls or boys to learn about how girls are attracted to boys and boys are attracted to girls, and some to each other. I did hide this attraction. Though as time went on and girls practiced being with boys, so I kissed my first person other than my parents at 13. In fact I kissed most of the girls at the school. This was enough to get me out of my shell of shyness and I became the best kisser. The group laughed a bit. With some of the girls I soon figured out that they were lesbians. That they too were attracted to girls like I was. At fifteen one of the bolder girls cornered me and I had my first orgasm. She worked hard to get me to come and she was the first person to find out about my pills. She was also the person to find out the pills I were taking were not birth control, but ones used by transgender to become female. She decided when I was 16 to tell the teachers that I took those drugs. It hurt me as I was in love with her. It was the first time I knew that I was not a girl. Though the surgery was perfect and a certain part of me made it more so. However my mother pulled me from that school and nearly sued it under just to keep them quiet. As I restart the pictures you will see that they change a bit faster. This is because my mother only saw me on the weekends, but once I was pulled from school the daily pictures returned, but I was now questioning her more. Her shy little mouse had learned about freedom and learned how to act not just like a lady, but as any child or teen should act. I found out what the drugs were and what they did for me. What they did to a boy. I still took them. I was a girl and I didn't want to start looking like a boy. I had no idea my gonads were useless. They had been pulled back inside my body and later ultrasounds put them in the spots you would find ovaries. They don't do much of any hormone production. My mother wanted them gone, but the surgeries didn't find them. As long as I took my hormones I would continue to look like I do. I was enrolled in another private school one more like a public school. The boys and girls were still schooled separately. I was labeled a prima donna from day one with my dresses and frilly gloves and my patient leather shoes. I slowly was able to wear less fancy dress as I started wearing skirts, but the attitude of superiority over the rest of my classmates set me apart from them. I was no longer shy, but just as alone as I had always been. I had friends now as I lead the perfect clique. We were the girls every other girl wanted to be or hated us. We were the girls that all the boys wanted to date or have sex with. The other girls had sex with the boys, yet I wanted a girlfriend and not a boyfriend. Each claimed to have gone all the way with me, but the most they got was a good blow job. I feared having sex with them. They were boys and their penises were scary and big. One boy came real close, but my mother caught us in time to save my virginity. So this is my story and I may not look like you, but I could have been. I wish my mother had not been like she was, but I have no idea what would have happened. What I would have chosen to be. Now I am a girl. A girl that could have been a boy. My genetic code says I should be a boy but through my mother's direction I have been guided as a girl. That my body developed both parts is a blessing and a curse. 
I have a womb and a vagina that is natural, yet curse never to have my own children as I had a penis and testicles. This last bit made them gasp or chuckle nervously. So even though I am comfortable in my body, that I don't want to be a boy or that no one would ever believe I wasn't a girl. Like you, I wish I had a choice. I wish I could have been given the life you have or a normal one like any other boy. I am a female now. Some of you will be jealous that I am physically enough like a girl that I bleed once a month, but that is just because my mother was that involved in my body. That by a twist of her will or fate that I developed as intersex enough to have both sex organs. It will be something I will struggle with the rest of my life. Marion was finished with her story and she turned the television off and the silence was a final as the darkened room. The lights came on and she saw acceptance mixed with confusion. One boy who looked like her when she was younger raised her hand. If your mother is so controlling how is it you are here? She wondered. It was a question Marion wasn't prepared to answer. They saw her grip the podium tightly. The tears started to fall as she lost the control she had so successfully used. They gave her time to recover. Finally, after many minutes she looked straight at the girl, and then at each of them. My mother is dead. She no longer can prevent me from living my life. She died in a car accident and while cleaning at her rooms I discovered not only the pictures I discovered her journals. I wasn't her daughter. I wasn't her son. I was an experiment she had planned well before I was conceived. She planned for me to be this way. She made me a girl. My father was appalled at what she had done. He left because my mother had changed that she was so obsessed with me. She drove my sister and brother away. I was the only one at her funeral. If I had known what she did to me before this, had I understood I wouldn't have even had a service for her. Distant relatives came, but not even her sisters and brother came. My grandparents came at the end only to see that she was gone. Marion explained. They didn't even say hello. They saw me as a thing to shun. I have written a letter to each of my family and I wait for just one of them to see that I am a victim, but I fear them thinking that way. I cannot know your pain, but neither can you understand mine, yet they are very similar. Marion, I thank you for your courage in coming here. A man stood and she jumped, not seeing him before. I can say that we are not family, but we can be your family. You like us know you should have been someone else. Thank you, but I think I will not return. I just wanted to tell my story and make you understand that there is another side to being not who you were meant to be. That no matter how much I look, act, feel like a girl I cannot be a normal girl. I wish I could forget even that. That even I didn't know I should have been a boy. Then maybe I could live a normal life, Marion replied. You live your life how you want to. You are who you are inside and let no one tell you different. I am a girl with boy parts so what? I am still a girl because I want to be, an older girl declared. You are a girl if you want to be. You can be a boy too. I wish I was like you. I wish I didn't get bullied. I wish my father didn't know I was a boy for my whole life. That he never forced me to be someone I wasn't. It doesn't change the fact that my family abandoned me just the same. My mother was my world, yet I craved my siblings and my father. I craved my grandparents' acceptance. Maybe in time they will accept me, but I am my mother's experiment. I am much like her. I look just like her. I sound like her. I will remind them every day that she made me. Marion replied. She took a deep breath and then let it out. I want to hide, but maybe somewhere there is another just like me. Being forced to be something they are not. That is my link to you. 
you are or have been forced to be something you are not. Then stay with us. You belong here as much as the rest of us. They didn't think a shemale could be like them, but we are like them in how we are treated. More so than anything you don't have to be alone. The deep voice of the woman vibrated the air. Marion grabbed the chair she stood by. The two closest to her helped her sit down. This helped calm her as her mind lost the battle over her loneliness. She felt for the first time in all her life that she belonged.